Hello and welcome to a new Planner Developer sneak peek. It's part 20 already. My name is Thomas Beck and today we are going to have a look at the VSE, the data transfer modifier and several improvements in the outliner. So let's start with it. In Planner 2.74 the outliner received several improvements. And one of them is the um, delete hierarchical tree. And that is, uh, many of you know possibly the um, select hierarchical um, elements. And that is the uh, right click on the sphere here, right click uh, on the sphere here, right click, and then select hierarchy. If something is selected, then it gets deselected. But if none is, nothing is selected, then everything that is un that is parented to this uh, sphere is selected and in the new version as you can see here there is now a delete hierarchy button and or or um, operator and with this operator you could easily delete all um, objects that are depending on this uh, topmost object let me just revert that uh, exactly the same would be if you say delete hierarchy there, then this uh, half of the tree would be select, uh, selected or um, deleted. And there are several more improvements and that is the uh, drag and drop between groups uh, functionality. So let me just uh, switch to the groups um, display mode here. And when you'd like to uh, track this sphere for example or let me just delete some of them from the groups so let's go to the groups and erase them from my group and um, when you'd like to have this sphere 3 into uh, to this my group then then you would simply drag and drop onto this group and you would see that there is this sphere 003 now in this group um, um, a, f a small feature that uh, may be not this uh, apparent is when you like to create several objects that is that are formed like this one but named differently and and uh, therefore separate objects then you would just have to drag and drop that to the viewport and then there are new objects objects created that are belonging to this group automatically. I don't know if you know that, but it's uh, it could be quite handy if you know that. So that is the second thing I'd like to show you. And the next one is uh, concerning the modifiers and the constraints. So let's switch back to all scenes and select this one by hitting dot on your keyboard. Now the Suzanne is selected and let's expand that and this. And now we have the uh, modifiers here. And you know, you all know um, the, the icons here in the right hand of the, in the right side of the uh, outliner. But when you right click on this element, then you now have a toggle viewport use and a toggle render use. That's the first improvement. The next one is the limit location constraint that is applied here. And you know that you can enable or disable it with this button here. But when you would like to do that in the outliner, then you can now by just um, by just right clicking on it, then selecting enable or disable. And as you can see, that's reflected down there too. Disable and enable. And when I see that, I would think that we need some icons here too. So I would target that for the next version. And now let's go to the fourth feature. And that's the orphaned uh, data block modes. And that is something that many of you were wishing. And I know why, because um, it's, far too easy to lose um, work when you don't know exactly how Blender handles data types. And that is something that is especially confusing for starters or for beginners. They create a material and say, okay, that's my mat. And they 
delete it because now they have created it so they um, like to use it in a library manner and then they create a new material and say that's my material too and when they save and open the file now then the first material this mat my, my mat because there's a zero it's got zero users then this my mat would be deleted on the next open and to uh, and that is uh, really a behavior of blender that is pretty good actually but you have to know it and um, it's more apparent when you uh, use um, the nla editor let me just switch to that or the uh, dope sheet that's even better to visualize the issue with the um, action editor and as you can see here we got two keyframes here the first one is uh, scaling it to one and the next to 1.5 or something like that and we got several actions here and those actions like the rotation action can be switched and when you when i do that then you see that it's now behaving completely different this one is the scaling this one is the rotation and this one is the location so when you would save now save the file now and load it again then all those zeroed uh, actions would be deleted if you haven't uh, checked this fake user button here but that's all theoretical. The new improvement that I'd like to show you is in the outliner now, because the orphan data visualization uh, shows you now all data blocks that are orphaned. And as you can see here, there is this rotation action and the sphere action, as well as on the materials, my mat and my test mat, because those two have have a have zero users here and therefore they would be deleted on the next save and when you'd like to purge them now then you would just hit purge all then he would purge the data blocks reload the files and that would uh, destroy your undo actions so be careful with with that the interesting thing in this uh, uh, often data mode is that you can't only delete them very easily by just holding down your mouse button and moving your mouse but that you can enable it and uh, therefore make it savable by just clicking on the x on the x like so and this fake user indicates then that this uh, data block is being saved and being loaded on the next uh, on the next file opening so um, I think this mode is very helpful if you suffered from data loss. And now let's come to the VSE. The VSE, as you can see here, has several improvements too. The first one is, and that is a feature that you may know from the very old Blender 2.4, I think, or 2.49 or something like that, is that you, when you drag and drop, uh, drag your mouse button, over a clip then this clip gets highlighted and the corresponding video is played in the uh, upper half here so as you can see it's not played back when you drag them drag the mouse outside this clip area then all those clips that are lying laying beneath uh, are played but if you have your mouse over a clip or over a certain clip like this one or this one then this clip or this clip alone gets played. So it's more or less like a preview function when you are with your mouse over a clip. So when you see that, normally now would be a blend effect. And when you uh, play that like this, then you see the blend effect. But if you uh, if you only previewing the clip by holding your mouse down and dragging your mouse over the clip, then you'll see that you only see this clip. So that could be helpful in complex projects, not especially in this one, but in complex projects. And the other feature, and that is something that I really like, is uh, when I'd like to create several proxies for several strips, then normally or previously, you always had to um, 
click on a certain strip, then select proxy timecode. And then with this proxy timecode, there were uh, several proxy, um, proxy checkboxes here, and you would enable every box that you like, and that for every strip. So you would select one strip after another and select every proxy setting. But now it's much easier. Just select all strips you'd like to have your proxies on, then enable proxy timecode, set selected strip proxies, select the um, proxy um, resolutions you'd like to have, click OK, and now you see that those proxies are enabled on every strip. And if you'd like to regenerate the proxies, because you have to do that once, um, just click Rebuild Proxy and Timecode Indices, and this is working for all selected strips, so it's pretty easy and pretty convenient now. That was the second thing. The next one, and that is really awesome too, is the um, follow playback that's in the, let me just look at it. It's in the playback menu there and it's called follow. And if you have follow active and uh, you are, for example, in this clip, then as soon as the marker reaches the end of the um, of the visible visible timeline, then the um, the area is switched to the new timeline to the new part of the time you, timeline you'd like to see, and so the um, the playhead is following the complete strip until the end. So that's very easy if you don't want to scroll that much. Earlier, I don't know if you use the VSE too uh, much, but I'm using it very much. And earlier it was like that. You were playing something like this, then your play, your um, marker was outside, your playhead was outside, then you would scroll back and try to find him again and keep in, in him in sync and that is not needed anymore, just enable playback follow and it's always staying in this in this uh, view. And as the last feature is for the uh, slip tool, I don't know if you, if you know the slip tool, just say S and now you can slip your, uh, your strip. And if you like to enter this uh, slip by hitting S and not only guessing where your strip starts and ends by moving your mouse, but you by, by knowing, by entering, for example, two or four frames, then you can do that now. Just hit S and four, for example, or four T, and now your strip is moving accordingly. Previously, it was only possible to uh, to create these strips, uh, th these slips with the mouse, but now you can enter numbers too. So that was it for the VSE, and now let's switch to the transfer data modifier. So let's now look at the uh, new modifier in the stack, and that's the data transfer modifier. We just um, add a new one. And this data transfer modifier is not that obvious to, to grasp, so I'll go through it and try my best to explain it to you. Um, we got a high poly object here that's uh, easily seeable here, and a low poly object there that's really low poly. And what we like now is we'd like to transfer data, data that is uh, contained in, in this object uh, to this object. And uh, especially the, um, let me see, the vertex groups, that's ex that's what we'd like to transfer. And that's an um, effort you would have to do by hand normally if you have retopologized your model, for example. And this modifier does its best to ease this process for you. And how it's doing that, that is exactly what I'd like to show you now. 
So select first the source object and as the um, weight group, as the vertex group is uh, in the high poly object contained, as you can see here, that's our vertex group, um, we should select this high poly object too. And so let's just go to our modifier, select the high poly object and those vertex groups are, who would have guessed that, in the vertex data. So just enable vertex data and vertex groups by clicking on it. If you hold down shift, you could click and enable several things. But now let's uh, only enable vertex groups and those data layers, um, the generation of those data layers are not um, the, the, the modifiers work. So it's you have two, two possibility, possibilities. The first possibility is you would just click plus and um, name the vertex group exactly as this one, or you use this generate data layers um, button, select first this one, then the target and say generate data layers. And you, as you have maybe seen there, um, it now generates a new group, the vertex group group, and when you are now going into the weight paint mode, then you see it's already transferring the data. So this one was the original, this one is the transferred one, and it does that by evaluating the nearest vertex and tries to uh, do that. So maybe we should set this one here to this. Okay, and as you can see now, the vertex is um, is now exactly at this position. And so we get a deep red here. And the other vertex is at this position. And it's a deep blue. It's not as, as deep as in the high poly object. If you look at this one, that's much deeper but it does the job pretty good, I'd say. So that's all to it. Uh, just enable the vertex data or the edge data if you'd like to have the sharp, the UV seam, subsurf crease and so on transferred. Hold down shift if you'd like to transfer several data, click generate data layers and then let the modifier do its work. And now we are at the end of the sneak peek already. So I hope that you learned something um, share it to support my work and I hope that we see us next time. Next time is the last time that we are covering the Blender 2.74 release and then we'll go straight to the 2.75 release with the new multi-view feature that is to, that has uh, hit trunk today or hit master today. So I hope to see you next time. Bye!